people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. Hello viewers, I'm your host Pratiksha Mishra with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's start the show by discussing Bangladesh Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's visit to India, which highlighted the deep cultural and historical ties between the two nations. Prime Minister Hasina and PM Modi engaged in discussions aimed at boosting bilateral relations in defense, economy and technology, resulting in significant agreements. This visit, the first by a foreign leader since India's new government took office, strengthened mutual cooperation and emphasized the strategic partnership that has grown since Bangladesh gained independence in 1971. Take a look. Bangladesh's Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina undertook a notable two-day journey to New Delhi where she received a formal welcome at Rajprati Bhavan, the official residence of the President of India. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi warmly received her, laying the groundwork for a series of important engagements. During his stay, Sheikh Hasina paid tribute to Mahatma Gandhi at Rajkhat, symbolizing the enduring values of peace and non-violence that bind Bangladesh and India together. The leaders then held extensive talks involving delegations, focusing on bolstering bilateral relations across various fields. A pivotal moment of the visit was the signing of multiple agreements aimed at boosting cooperation in defence, economy and other key sectors. Sheikh Hasina and Prime Minister Narendra Modi oversaw these signings, highlighting their joint commitment to mutual prosperity and regional stability. Among the agreements exchanged were pledges to foster a digital and green partnership for sustainable development, illustrating shared aspirations for technological advancement and environmental protection. These agreements and renewed memoranda of understanding across diverse sectors represented a significant stride in strengthening the strategic partnership between India and Bangladesh. আজকে আমরা দুই পক্ষ যে আলোচনা করেছি অত্যন্ত ফলপ্রসূ আলোচনা আমরা করতে পেরেছি এবং বৈঠকে আমরা অন্যান্য পারস্পরিক স্বার্থ সংশ্লিষ্ট বিষয়ের মধ্যে রাজনীতি ও নিরাপত্তা বাণিজ্য সংযোগ অভিন্ন নদীর পানি বন্টন জ্বালানি ও শক্তি আঞ্চলিক ও বহুপাক্ষিক সহযোগিতা নানা বিষয়ে আলোচনা করেছি বাংলাদেশ আমাদের রূপকল্প আমরা এবার ঘোষণা দিয়েছি কারণ একটা লক্ষ্য স্থির না থাকলে সামনে এখনো যায় না আমরা স্মার্ট বাংলাদেশ দু হাজার একচল্লিশ সালের মধ্যে গড়ে তুলব আর ভারত বিকশিত ভারত রিকসিট ভারত টোয়েন্টি ফর্টি সেভেন ডিওয়িং দি বায়োলাট্রাল ডিসকাশনস ইন্ডিয়া অ্যান্ড বাংলাদেশ সাইন দ্য নেমো ইউ টু এক্সপ্যান্ড ট্রানজিট ফেসিলিটিস অ্যালয়িং বাংলাদেশি গুডস টু ট্রানজিট থ্রু দি ইন্ডিয়ান রেলওয়ে নেটওয়ার্ক টু নেপাল অ্যান্ড ভুটান Both nations also agreed to expedite the implementation of the Bangladesh Bhutan Nepal India Motor Vehicle Agreement to boost sub-regional connectivity. Additionally, they discussed cooperation on counter-terrorism, border management and other relevant issues. Humne counter-terrorism, kattarwaad aur border ke shantipurna prabandhan par अपनी सहभागिता को मजबूत करने का निश्चय किया है इंडियन ओशन क्षेत्र के लिए हमारी विजन समान है इंडो पैसिफिक ओशन इनिशिएटिव्स में शामिल होने के लिए बांग्लादेश के निर्णय का हम स्वागत करते हैं हम बिम्स्टेक सहित अन्य रीजनल और अंतर्राष्ट्रीय फोरम पर भी अपना सहयोग 
जारी रखेंगे शेख हसीनाज विजिट मार्क द फर्स्ट स्टेट विजिट बाय अ फॉरेन लीडर सिंस द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ द न्यू गवर्नमेंट इन इंडिया India and Bangladesh share a long and multifaceted relationship shaped by historical, cultural and geographical ties. Post independence, Bangladesh emerged as a separate nation in 1971 following a liberation war with Pakistan during which India provided crucial support. India was the first country to recognize Bangladesh's independence marking the beginning of diplomatic relations between the two nations since then bilateral ties have evolved significantly encompassing trade defense connectivity and people to people exchange The residents of Pakistan occupied Jammu and Kashmir endure a year long battle against soaring prices and unfulfilled promises Despite repeated protests for relief on food and electricity cost the administration's response has been arrest rather than assistance a local fahad ahmed kiani's revelation of torture while in custody underscores the harsh realities facing dissenters in this region a report it has been over a year and the residents in pojk are still grappling with inflation and high prices of wheat flour and other essential food items There have been several protests demanding subsidies on wheat and flour prices as well as electricity bills but the administration has not fulfilled any of these demands instead they arrested those who joined the protests Fahab Hamid Kiani who was arrested along with other protesters in May revealed that he was tortured in jail for 6 days वहाँ पे छः दिन हमें समझ लें टॉर्चर किया गया कि हमें बंद कमरों में रखा गया बाहर निकलने की इजाज़त नहीं है किसी से मिलने जुलने की इजाज़त नहीं है जो बंदा जिसका कोई जुर्म ही नहीं है जिस पे कोई एफ आई आर नहीं है ड्यूरिंग द मैसिव डेमोन्स्ट्रेशन इन मे थ्री प्रोटेस्टर्स एंड वन सिक्योरिटी ऑफिशियल व किल्ड इन क्लैश An alliance of civil rights groups called off the protest following several days of turmoil when Pakistan Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif approved a grant of 24 billion Pakistani rupees to help meet most of their demands. However, activists have now raised concerns over the lack of action in providing subsidies and any sort of relief to the residents. लेकिन हुकूमत इस वक्त अपनी हर धर्मी पर डटी हुई है और वो अभी तक जो है आवाम को सब्सिडाइज आटा और फ्री बिजली का हक जो है फ्री बिजली का हक भी उन्होंने ना दिया तीन रुपये फ़ी यूनिट जो उन्होंने ऐलान किया तीन रुपये पाँच रुपये तो वो भी जो है अभी तक उन्होंने नहीं दिया Fahab told reporters that administration has not resolved any of their issues and has failed to fulfill any of their primary demands. He also highlighted that charges of murder have been pressed against the activists which he believes are bogus and intentional. जो है अभी तक मसाइल जो है वो हल नहीं हुए हमारे बहुत से असीरान अभी भी रिहा नहीं हुए जिन पे बेबुनियाद और बोगस एफ आई आर जो है वो उन पर लगाई गई है और उनको यानी तीन सौ दफ़ा तीन सौ दो में अंदर किया गया है जो ए एस आई शहीद हुए उनको उनका जो कत्ल है वो उन पर डाला गया है हालाँकि एफ आई आर में पुलिस ने यह चीज़ खुद लिखी हुई है कि इनको उस कत्ल से आधा घंटा पहले हमने अरेस्ट कर लिया था There are signs of unrest brewing among the residents over these demands. Locals in POJK are fed up with the administration and the authorities in the region. Heavy taxation and the lack of subsidies on food have disgruntled the local populace. Amidst inflation and a high degree of suppression from the administration, matters are getting worse in POJK. Time now for Asia this week the stories from across the continent Taiwan said on Wednesday that it had chased away Chinese coast guard vessels from waters off one of its outlying islands Kinmen while also criticizing China for improper law enforcement methods and interference in the Pacific According to Taiwan's Coast Guard administration, four Chinese Coast Guard vessels had entered restricted waters close to Kinmen 
on two separate occasions on June 25 morning before being driven away by Taiwan's vessels. 是遭中国海警船建筑金门县市水域海巡署立即调派巡防艇采取分组对应全程监控全数距离至我国县市水域外今年一月至六月二十五日子海巡署已驱离越界陆船八百三十五艘登检待案七艘海巡署严正执法的
During Vikramasinghe's national address, his supporters gathered in Colombo watching his speech on a large screen. They welcomed the announcement, seeing it as a means to reignite vital infrastructure initiatives. The supporters celebrated the announcement by lighting fireworks and enjoying traditional milk rice. Earlier during his address at the 31st All India Partners Meet in Colombo from June 20 to 22, President Ranil Vikramasinghe highlighted Sri Lanka's resilience through two challenging years of economic crisis, attributing it to the crucial financial support of 3.5 billion USD from India. He underscored his commitment to maintaining a robust partnership with New Delhi, noting that during his recent visit to India for the new government's inauguration, he and Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi discussed key areas of collaboration. Vikramasinghe further mentioned that there is also an emphasis on a project aimed at creating land connectivity between Sri Lanka and India. In April 2022, Sri Lanka experienced its first sovereign default since gaining independence from Britain in 1948. This unprecedented financial crisis resulted in President Vikramasinghe's predecessor, Gotabaya Rajapaksa, stepping down from office in the same year. India's musical landscape is a mosaic created with threads of classical, folk and contemporary influences resonating across generations and borders. This ancient musical tradition with its intricate rags and tals has been passed down from generations as a legacy for centuries. The Banaras Gharana in India, one of the prominent Indian gharanas or school often known as the custodians of Indian ancient classics is carrying forth the tradition even today through their long lineages. Join us as we explore the musical heritage of the city of Varanasi. Nestled on the banks of the Ganga River, the city of Varanasi intertwines with spirituality resonating with hearts through its timeless melodies and classical music. These streets often come alive with the traditional beats of drums, tabla and sitar, creating a vibrant symphony, captivating locals and visitors alike. Amidst this lies a musical tradition that originated in the 18th century and continues to flourish today. The Banaras Gharana alongside the ancient banks of the Ganga. The Banaras Gharana, known for its intricate musical compositions, vocal brilliance and seamless dance moves, narrates the tales of ancient India, standing as a testament to the country's rich cultural heritage. Let's meet Pandit Dyobrat Mishra, who hails from a long lineage of Indian classical musicians. His father, Pandit Shivnath Mishra, is an Indian sitar player and the first person in the Banaras Gharana to have introduced the sitar. In 2022, he was awarded the Padma Shri, one of the highest civilian awards of India. Mishra, one of the prominent sitar players and the 11th generation of the Varanasi musical gharana, proudly carries forth the age-old legacy of his family, which continues to stun audiences worldwide.
is soulful music. You can find in Varanasi. There are, you know, so something is like Varanasi is still preserving it. And for international audience, I want to tell you that this, this Banaras is still carry on the old tradition. So if somebody wants to come and study in, in this beautiful town, they should come and they should meet musician here. The soul-stirring vocals and instrumental brilliance of this ancient musical tradition are inspired by various musical styles like Drupad, Khayal and Tumri, creating a unique musical language. With each note and tal, the intricate musical composition of Banaras Gharana evokes a multitude of emotions in the listeners. Moreover, one can find the relevance of the ancient Guru Sishya tradition within the walls of Gharanas, where they teach discipline through a spiritual way of teaching. In Varanasi, there is still this tradition of um, Guru and, and student and to learn there. Yes, and that's how I ended up in Varanasi and that's how I found this, this school and my teacher. There is a fundamental difference in a lot of, like in teaching, in how I, how I learned guitar in the West from, from teachers, but this Guru Shish Parampara is way more, it builds on a lineage and like I'm not here and I, I am not only here and have a teacher, but I'm living in this house having a, te having a teacher whose father is also my teacher and whose son is also playing and I'm like immersed in, in music and Im I'm immersed in this environment. While music provides a total brain workout, dance adds a unique dimension to it. Like music, dance in gharanas hold equal significance and is popular worldwide for its eccentric style and technique. Kathak, a classical dance form of India, has historic associations with Indian gharanas as does the Banaras gharana. The articulate Kathak dance of Banaras gharana has its own distinct style characterized by intricate footwork and rhythmic moves, making it a medium to narrate mythological folk tales. Meet Vishal Krishna, an outstanding Kathak performer and the 11th generation dancer of this Karana. Krishna exhibits the distinctive movements characteristic of the Banaras style of dance, which resemble the divine gestures of Lord Shiva and Lord Krishna. I started learning from very childhood when I was like three and a half years old and everybody is in my family is a dancer, my aunt, my father, my sisters, they all are dancers. So my father used to say one thing, I will speak in Hindi, that I don't have to learn how to do it. So I think I think that my father was influenced by my house, that my father was a teacher, a guru, and he prepared a lot of students in Banaras. So I think that slowly, slowly, I was a uh, I can say that I have loved with Kathak. The term Kathak is derived from the Sanskrit words Katha, which means story, and the Kathaka, which means one who tells the story. The ancient tradition of Kathak dance is deeply ingrained in the cultural value system of the country, which is being preserved through gharanas in Lucknow, Jaipur, Raigarh and Banaras. These gharanas also run academies and schools where they impart various techniques and styles of kathak art and storytelling through dances. Gharana holds immense significance in the Indian musical arena serving to preserve the country's age-old musical heritage akin to the sacred Ganga's flow from generation to generation and impart their values to the world with the same sincerity.
The Banaras Gharana embodies the essence of India's classical music tradition, preserving it for future generations. And with that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care. People have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect.